What's up, Swizzafoo here with another game dev update. Making the game Wraithbinder, a multiplayer game set in the Songbringer universe with all the Songbringer reaction. Um, I'm actually quite surprised here that the my player is moving so slow whenever the frame rate's slow. Something weird got tied to the frame rate here. Uh, I'm just realizing and dealing with that right now. Uh, but anyways, um. What I got done today was, uh, let's see, we've got the blink and the go sword implemented, and also the camera's, camera moves with smoothness, so check it out. Um, the camera always moves uh, to face, I'm trying to get away from this guy here. Uh, the camera always moves where you're facing, so see how I'm facing to the left, and the camera moves a little bit to the left. I face to the right, camera moves a little to the right, face up, same thing, right? And no matter where I go, the camera smoothly goes and updates itself to the point where it gets there. So that solves a lot of the jerkiness of the camera that was moving around because of um, just because of 2D translate, like translating 3D positions into 2D and 2D positions being sort of like you know on the integer uh, than being on the floating point. So um, that that's uh, that's nice to have that camera move like that, nice and smoothly. Uh, let's go check out the blink orb, and um, hopefully no one's picked it up. Okay, cool. We got the blink orb. Uh, let's see what buttons is it going to be. We already got grenades there. Uh, that's the shield. Oh, there we go. There's a blink. <laughs> we blink somewhere really weird there. Uh, that's what it's supposed to sort of look like. It's a sort of a rough implementation to um, Songbringers. What the heck? That was weird. Uh, this is a really, really rough implementation of Songbringers blink. Uh, there's a lot. To, there's a lot of code to the blink. I didn't. I didn't realize it. I'll show you in a second. But goddamn, the blink is is like three pages long of code. It's it's way too much. It should be should break that up into more functions. Let's go check out the ghost sword. Oh, that's the boomerang. Oh shoot! I don't know what button we're gonna be able to use. The, I don't know if we can use the uh, ghost sword. Oh no, the ghost sword. You just pick it up. Never mind. Don't need a button to press. Let's hope it's there. All right, cool. We got it. So when you got the ghost sword, it launches a sword. Everything is really moving even slower now. So weird. It's like... Somehow, everything is moving... Like, the tick is somehow updating slower when the frame rate's less... And it just happened since last week. I wonder what the heck happened. Well, anyways, let's look at some code, yeah? Um, here, this is, uh, you can see some of the, I've refactored code from Songbringer to implement the Blink. Um, Songbringer had a lot of um, eight, there was, there was eight compass directions you can move in with Songbringer. And with uh, Wraithbinder here, I'm making it vector-based. So you can actually move in 360 degrees. Uh, as opposed to Songbringers, only four or eight different compass directions, which would be every 45 degrees. So, and here's also refactoring all the used blink code. Basically, I've commented out a lot of stuff, and really, this is just determining where you can blink to. So, it tries to blink to the, the maximum distance, tries diagonal, tries cardinal blinks. There's probably something wrong with this a little bit with the way the way it's working with the new uh, Kitfu engine here, um, because we saw it there warp me onto the sky, so something's wrong there. But then check out all this code that's just commented out for now. Most of this is animations, but a lot of it also is adding elements to the blink because you could add all five elements to the blink orb um, in Songbringer, which you won't be doing in Wraithbinder. But as in Wraithbinder, when you're a wraith you'll be able to get elemental effects and powers and things like that. So it'll be a little bit different than Songbringer, but still we'll have the good old fire, ice, lightning, and acid. Uh, so, and then this is just, uh, this, this huge section right here is basically just scheduling the damage on arrival. This is moving the player right there to the position we just determined up above. And this is the, this is schedules before the tick, this whole method here, so that it does the damage on arrival, which just creates a blink damage entity um, okay, so that's basically the blink. It's basically just determining a position to go to and then warping the player there and doing some damage. And it also needs to do some damage on the way and and animate and do a lot of 
fun effects and particles and stuff like that, and that'll make it cool. But it's nice to have it just basically implemented for now. Um, and then the other thing is the Ghost Sword. That's a really simple one. All the all the terms is if you can launch the Ghost Sword, then launch the Ghost Sword. Love how simple and easy that is. So if you you have to be able to have the ability of Ghost Sword, which you've picked up the Ghost Sword item, and you have to have no Ghost Swords on the screen that you own yet or right now. That's it. Um, yeah, so what am I working on next? I also want to do items for uh, a speed boost. I think that would be really cool to have an item that you actually carry a quantity of, a quantity of, and you can actually use it to speed boost, right? So you're walking around, you find the speed boost item, and later you're like in a fight or you're trying to run away, and boom, speed boost out of there. Or maybe you're trying to catch an, um, somebody and you speed boost up to them. That'd be cool. And then also the healing item, the cactus, we'll have that. Uh, now you'll be able to, once again, pick up and use judiciously at whatever moment you choose. Um, there's a couple other items uh, that I want to do, and I'm forgetting with them right now. There's a, like a damage booster. Maybe that's like you use it immediately. Uh, anyways, I'll come up with some other some other ideas for items. And I'm thinking maybe that items actually reappear after a time too. So maybe they there's some kind of really cool, um, huge temple-y entity or something right here, and you are able to do some crazy cool animation and then pick up the item. And then later, after 30 seconds or 60 seconds or whatever another duration of time, that entity will regenerate and come back there. So so that by you know, by the end of the match, you could have multiple powers. Like lots of people could have multiple powers, and that be that might be fun too. Lots of stuff to play around with once this game gets to be really playable. At this point, it's like almost playable. It's all it's it kind of is. You can you can just run around and play a really dumb AI at this point. Um, but yeah, lots more fun to have to be had once this gets to be a little bit more real and playable with sound effects and a smarter AI and all the weapons and damage and items and things like that implemented. Um, what's up with that guy leaving behind a red square? It's kind of weird. Everybody's leaving behind a red square now. It's, it's the red square party. Sweet. I want to, I want to go to the red square party. Let's go. I don't know. I really don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Okay, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.